It's not gonna be in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, why are you laughing? Because you're like, what the fuck? Dude, just it. Alright, here we go. I'm nervous too, bro. And I did a couple. Dude, I always get nervous. Though. Yeah, just make sure you have the mic up against your. Like, but it's easy for me to to make it like um, cause I always talk to people when I'm tattooing them. Yeah. And they'll always give me interesting conversations, so I always give them like, I always tell them, dude, this would be. You know sick. how to go with if the We flow. had a podcast like. And some mics around us while we're tattooing, dude, it'd be like the best. Right? That's yeah. like every day we go like that. Put the mic a little closer to your brother. Yeah. Okay, here we go. And then cool. you can tilt it to like your mouth towards, towards, a little bit towards. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. All right. Here we go. <sighs> <laughs> What's up, Gustavo? What's up, man? <laughs> How you been, man? <laughs> really good. Chilling. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Um, I know you might be a little nervous right now. Your first podcast. Yeah. Dude, it's like my third, fourth podcast and I'm still a little nervous. Yeah. I would like to talk about stuff like that. Thank you so much for coming on to Rick Productions podcast where I bring creatives, talented artists, anybody really that's doing something cool. dope in the community yeah. onto the show so they can talk about. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and what brought you here. And yeah, introduce yourself. Um, well, my name is Gustavo. And then um, I had um, already met you before because you had done me like a, a cool little video for tattooing and stuff. Yeah. So... Um, <laughs> there goes, huh? I'm like, there goes the signature uh, podcast thing. Oh, the uh, ambulance! I had seen it in the, I think in the one, one of the ones you sent me. Yeah, where it came out in the background. You know what's funny? At this point, people, the people don't know if we're doing that as a sound effect or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like, saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, the the main street is like literally right there. So yeah, yeah, basically. But yeah. I'm sorry, the ambulance man. Uh, um, yeah, dude. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I tattoo and then um, with that, I got started in, I think in the, be yeah, in the beginning of high school, I just started doing a bunch of calligraphy. I started drawing a lot with, with um, a lot of close friends. They're actually from around this area because I, I grew up in the valley. Uh -huh. And so a lot of my friends are from around LA, LA like area. Compton, like Compton. all these areas. I'm not familiar with them. Even on my way here, I was like, Dude, like, like where, where am, am I, I going? But um, yeah, I would just draw a lot with with a lot of friends and um, they were doing like graffiti and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's how I got um, introduced to at least tattooing because all of them ended up tattooing. And um, uh, yeah, it was just like my little gateway to entering to tattooing yeah. so you all your group of friends were all interested somehow in yeah. not just art but like tattooing specifically yeah they're all tattooing right now so since they were just jumping on it i decided to to try it out as well and then i had um well i, I have a cousin who's also a tattoo artist so seeing him as well just i think just being like around it um for the most part i started just um I, I started like sticking to me. I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna try it out as well. So when I was 16, I was walking around or my mom would drive me to like um, different tattoo shops in the valley. Yeah. And I was looking for an apprenticeship, like just for someone to take me in and teach me how to tattoo. Like some kind of mentorship. Yeah. yeah. And um, usually in return, what you do is you start, you help them out with like cleaning doing all these little errands and stuff yeah because they're teaching you for free <clears throat> so uh, in a way to pay them back you you um it's like a you, barber shop you're cleaning the floors you yeah help, stuff like that with small stuff yeah it's not too difficult but thankfully uh, a lot of shops were saying no because of my age because you have to be 18 but um i found this shop where where they took me in it was called hustle and tats in like mission hills okay and um yeah, they took me in and they were teaching me from literally like do like close to my birthday when I turned 17. Yeah. So I had that whole year from 17, 18 to like just learn. So um, they took me in. It was a whole year. And then on my birthday again, when I turned 18, I started taking an appointment. So I just like uh, jumped on it with like small stuff. Just or, right away, huh? What, yeah. what, were one of the, what were some of the like the like what, when you were there, what were you learning? What were some of the things you learned as a tattoo um, artist? He's the, the, they started me off by, um, by having me drawing a lot. So I did a bunch of calligraphy, just lettering all like, kind of like, so like just practice, like practice. any font that I could think of. Yeah. Just lettering. And then slowly I moved into black and gray, which is like just images, drawing portraits and stuff like that. 
that was more nerve wracking because I had never done things like that. But um, yeah, I slowly got into them. And question, yeah. I see sometimes in your Instagram that like <laughs> I, you've said it before, you don't like like just lettering. lettering. Why is that? Yeah. So I started off with um, doing writing, but something my mentor, his, his name's Panda, um, something he would always tell me. Uh, it was funny because he was always very like good at teaching. He's very good at explaining and being like specific on how to do things. Um, he would tell me, um, um, I know you could do lettering and everything, but let's show the world what Gordito could really do. So I always <laughs> thought that shit was funny, but he would always tell me things like that. And even though it sounds like corny or like just silly, but he, um, it just stuck to me. I was like, you know what? Uh, you're right. Like it kind of opened up my mind into like, oh, maybe I should start trying to do different things because okay, yeah. um, like he would always say, it's fun to do lettering, but wouldn't you want to do like bigger a name? projects? Yeah, like uh, lettering, but next to it put like a rose and portraits and do all this fun stuff and do like i feel really thankful that i did move on to doing more than just lettering yeah because right now dude like if i do a lettering piece i have an attention span for it of like three hours after that i start getting kind of like certain pieces will bore you and that's oh. why you have to kind of like pick and choose what you want to do like if someone messages me for like something that i'm like oh someone else could do better yeah i'll put them that way because other than that you're probably going to be like either bored so you or honor your work you're like hey man i'm gonna be honest with you like it's not even for the buck like i just yeah. i'm gonna just direct <laughs> you to the guy that can do it yeah and usually it's all thankfully it's always people in my little friend group mm -hmm. so it'll be people i work with oh or, so it's you're, you're referring them yeah like, hooking each other up that, like people ask me for the anything like whatever specific style i'm like oh this guy will do it really good because uh then, fun fact right fun fact rick productions i do not have any tattoos bro oh so, <laughs> so i'm just like if i want to get one i'm like maybe i could get a name right and then yeah. i see a official gordito post like no <laughs> no letters no names I'm like, oh, no shit. Like, well i do like doing them i yeah. i have a lot of fun with writing but the thing is i i don't want like every single appointment or every single time i tattoo to be just lettering just because um when you do black and gray or when you do a full sleeve with different images it, it you could get a lot more creative even with lettering you could get creative but to me i feel like i just slowly went away from it and just yeah. started doing black and gray and i feel like with black and gray dude 10 hours will feel like two yeah and then i'm talking to people so it's if it, my time flies by it's so fun and then i'm listening to podcasts watching tv or whatever so i have i feel like i enjoy it a lot more so even if there's like a um a big lettering piece sometimes i'll take it because I'll, I'll miss it and i'm just like oh, i'll do lettering today yeah um so just it depends but i won't take on like a whole month of just lettering because i know I'll probably be like you'll be bored of it. I'll, I'll get yeah. I'll you know it's over. crazy, man. And which is why I have you on the show because like I'm a videographer, yeah. photographer, creative director, and it's almost the same thing. Like our skill sets, like why? Like sometimes we think the same thing. Like damn, we're tired of these small budgets, these yeah. small projects. Yeah, I want to showcase my talent. Like big, bring things. on the yeah. big stuff. You know, I'm tired <laughs> of taking these little spots. So it's yeah. crazy how like it works the same way in your mentality as a yeah. tattoo artist. You know, yeah. like, hey, I'm tired of these little stuff. Show me, like, come on. Like, I'm sure, like, for you, like, also the, there's this guy that, it's a good friend of ours. Um, He does videography. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you've seen the little videos he's done for me. Oh, yeah, most definitely, uh, bro. Yeah. I'm so, like, you got yourself a good guy, man. Like, he's a really, dude, he's a really nice guy. And then um, the girl that I tattooed with, she she found him initially and she 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 recommended him. Um, But... Even then, I always ask him because I like talking about this stuff with people because mm -hmm. he's creative. I'm like, if you ever get bored of doing these tattoo videos, bro, don't be afraid to tell me because I know <laughs> he much rather do music videos. Yeah. He much rather do bigger projects. Everything else is to help him with funds so that he right. could do those bigger projects. It's like the side quest. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> you have to take that though. Like you have to take those small projects yeah. to fund yourself. 
um, get a little bit of money and stuff like that. That way you're able to take on those bigger projects. The bigger projects. You huh? buy your equipment, everything you need, you know? That's a good key. One of my good friends that does the same thing we do here, yeah. he was just telling me that yesterday. He's like, dude, he called them side quests. He's like, you got to yeah. take the side quests yeah. for the bigger and better. Because sometimes we we get head high and we're like... We don't eat the little crumbs and like no, nah, you dude. do, bro. <laughs> he's like, he's I like, like everything, bro. Like even today, I did. I'll do, like I'll do a big session. But dude, I start really early at eight in the morning, from eight to eleven a.m. I do small tasks, bro. Small tasks. I'll, okay. I'll take on like two small tasks. I'll book them early, so that way at twelve I can start my big project, and I'll go home by six p.m. or seven. Yeah. Uh, whether I finish or not, because sometimes they I need two sessions. But yeah, dude, those small those small crumbs are important. So, dude, obviously you came a long way, right? When I first met you, it was like few 20, year, 20, years ago, right? Twenty yeah, few years ago. Yeah. And I feel like you've grown a lot. I love your work, by the way. I just want to tell you. Obviously, you, it caught dude. my attention. I love from, your videography and everything. From too. one artist to another, dude, yeah. you you're you're awesome. Your style of tattooing is awesome, dude. Thank you. Dude. Um, I just want to say, like, before you started tattooing. Like you kind of mentioned that you you always knew you want to be a tattoo artist. Was there anything else you wanted to be when you were a kid? Like, dude, I wanted to be a cop. Don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to be a, a cop or a fireman. Um, and what else did I have interest in? I think mainly just that, bro. Like, I did go to school for business marketing. Okay, but I had to drop out in 2020 because it was hard for me to go to school online mm -hmm. with the pandemic yeah so i just dropped it and actually in 2020 bro even though it had been three years of me tattooing i was doing it part-time like i was tattooing two days a week because i was in school the whole time i started in high school and then i went straight into the college and stuff so i was only tattooing <laughs> once or twice a week and dude once i dropped out I noticed like a significance in like income and everything. Yeah. Just because I was so focused on tattooing and I was learning a lot every month. I was like, dude, like I would look back a month and I was like, okay, I did this piece a lot better. And then just try to like nitpick it, try to learn from it. But you're probably expanding yourself too much. I'm not focused on tattooing. Like yeah, going dude, to school, I was, doing this, doing that. Yeah. Cause I was like, what do I want to do with my life? I wanted to do the yeah. police stuff and all that, but well, to be, well, are you officially over that now? Yeah, dude. <laughs> mainly because right now it's tough for yeah. like police officers and all that, or just people who are in that field. That just, field, yeah. Just because, dude, like it's crazy right now. So also, I feel like I value my life way too much. I don't want to ever die type of thing, yeah. you know? Like okay, at least not young. So stuff like that, I. I like to keep myself away from like craziness, crazy bro. stuff. Like I won't even go to bars, nothing. It's like. funny because I I also like inspired to be a cop too. Oh, sick, yeah! Dude. I actually like I actually took the test uh, yet last year. I was yeah. working on the fitness test and everything, and oh, I kind of right. I was the closest I've gotten, and I kind of fell off because again, like we have all this other stuff, right? Yeah, we have like what we do on the side. I do all kinds of stuff, bro. It's just like it's crazy. Yeah. I do videography. I still have like a nine to five. Most people don't know that. They think I'm full time with this. Yeah. And then I do like all these other stuff. So I'm just like, ah, there's so much on our plate. Yeah. But it's funny how like we could relate to that and that answer. Yeah. Question, bro. I I really love your style, like I mentioned before. Um is is there any was there is has there you talk to me about a time when you had a complicated client where like they wanted oh, you to dude. do something and you're like, bro, like it was just complicated. <laughs> how how'd you deal with that, bro? Like Um so usually like if a piece right away, cause I do like a mini console on the, um, um, I do like a mini console through text messaging. Like I'll, I'll get to the basic questions. Like, what do you want? Where do you want it? And, um, if it's not my style, I'll push it away. But so I haven't had, um, difficulties as far as like design wise, really. Sometimes people could be like a lot more, um, what's it, particular and that's okay. It's a challenge. Um, so I'm like, oh, I'll take it. But there's been times where they're so particular that the day before I get sick to my stomach and I feel like, should I cancel? Like, dude, I did that two weeks ago. This guy wanted a specific design and, <laughs> and I do the design. They probably see it on your post and like, I want that. And you're like, oh, dude. like. No, well, they wanted something that was a little bit out of my, out of my element. And mm -hmm. I was like, I took it on. But then when it came down to the day before the tattoo, I had to design it because I always designed the day before. And 
I was like having so much trouble with that. I was like, dude, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I hit him up and I told him I was, I was honest. I was like, hey, bro, like, I know I agreed to this, but I'm having so much trouble with the design. Like to make it different or what? Like just to just with the element as far as like, I didn't know how I was going to approach it once I placed it on the on the arm. And usually, dude, I'll have it figured out as soon as I accept the appointment. Like I'm like, dude, I already see it before it's before we even we before we even book it. as soon as they tell me what they want. But yeah. this one, I was so underprepared and um, I told him, dude, I don't know, whatever. But he's like, I told him I, I could recommend you to an artist that I think will do a great job on it. And he was like, honestly, man, like, I really love your work. And he's like, I'm willing to just let you do it. And maybe you'll learn from from it or Oh, or he was not. okay with that. Dude, yeah. And I was Damn. like, I, because of that, I think he made me feel like super, he gave me a little bit of confidence in yeah. myself. And then I did it. So I had him two days back to back. And dude, by the end of it, I even went home and I told my lady, I was like, dude, I'm so happy I did it. Yeah. Because I I, it, I approached it um, how I just, um, I approached it how how I would with any other tattoo and stuff. And I just did it like my way. And um, I was super happy with it. Because it was just like, it was more than him just wanting a tattoo. It's yeah. like, I wanted official Gordito's tattoo. Dude, right? yeah, he was like, I want it from you. I was like, it, so it made me feel good. I was like, all right, I'll do it. I don't, but, have, I don't have tattoos, but I know like it's a thing. Like for people to get tattoos by certain artists, it's like a flex. Because you're well, like a brand, right? Like Yeah, you know. like like um it personally me for myself, I go to people I really like admire. Like yeah. a lot of them are like close friends and if it's um someone I don't know, they become super like good friends and stuff. So okay. um yeah, I feel like I go to people and I'm like, Oh yeah, I went to this guy and or this guy and um it makes me happy to say it, you know? So yeah, it's like picking your your Rolex, but in tattoo form. <laughs> Picking a Rolex yeah. in tattoo form. That's pretty dope, man. Yeah. Um, question, dude. Um, man, I was going to ask you. I don't know why I just blanked out. Okay, so when I first met you, and until now even, I'm seeing, you obviously gotten so far with your tattooing. You've yeah. gained more followers. You gained a lot of more momentum. You're driving a badass car. I've seen it. <laughs> Thank it's you. badass car. Um and since since the moment I met you, you've always seen you you've always came off like a very humble person. And even until now, I see it, and it's just like, is it is it hard being where you're at right now, making all this like good income and stuff like that? Has it ever like mentally like messed with you, or do you ever felt like I had you had to like bring yourself down, or like because people um, have issues with that, right? Once they're at like a certain status yeah, or level, I feel like I I will see it with people with some people yeah like i'll see it i'm like like dude why are you letting these things affect you like, like you've changed bro <laughs> like no do stuff like that and it kind of sucks because sometimes it's people you really that have taught you so much and you care about and it sucks to see them like um becoming a certain way yeah or developing like a really bad ego and like stuff like that will for me personally, dude, like it just pushes me away. I'll just move, move. I'll just go about my business and go somewhere else um, um, just to stay away from it. Just because I feel like if you're around it, it'll kind of like, I don't know how else to say it, but it'll kind of like poison you too. You'll yeah. become the same way. So um, honestly, to me, I'm, I feel like I'm very happy with, with everything. Like the income part, I'm very happy with... Um, with what I'm doing and it I feel like um my mom is like uh she always reminds me just to appreciate it and I do appreciate it a lot because um if it wasn't for this I wouldn't be like comfortable with how I am right now financially and stuff like that yeah. so to me it's more like um money's more like a, a little tool to help me feel more free because technically I feel um I mean, I'm not set for life type of thing, right. but I feel financially free, not stressed out. And awesome. I'm able to go and enjoy my daughter. I'm able to take time off and go on a mini road trip or enjoy time with my family. So all of that, I feel like because of all of that, because of tattooing and how much it helps, I'm able to just be a lot happier. Because, you know, a lot yeah. of people do stress so much about 
things financially. Yeah. But I'm so you like feel blessed. I feel yeah, I'm very blessed to 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 not have to be dealing with that. I do get stressed out sometimes about yeah. certain things, but for the most part, I feel like um I'm able to always keep myself like um grounded. Grounded because I also take therapy. So I have advice from my therapist for professionally. Yeah. I have advice from my good friends. Dude, they're like professional therapists. Dude, that's crazy, man. Yeah. It's just like, okay, you touch you touch on a topic because uh one in one of my podcasts, one of the girls were like, I I uh, I I like admire you. I said, "Why?" She's like, "Because you you preach like therapy to men." And mm. a lot of men are like they have like that machismo and yeah. um, like oh therapy no like th- and it actually helps a lot. I yeah. took therapy because I was in a really bad place. Yeah, and it's just like it helped me a lot. So yeah, yeah. What's and, what's the one takeaway from therapy that you took, dude? Um, I one thing I know about it is that don't you don't have to wait until things are bad to take it. I dude, I go. I did one yesterday. I go every two weeks. Whether I'm having a good day or a bad day or a bad month. Wow. Like, so because I go continuously and I stay consistent, dude, like I tackle every little problem right away and I never have to deal with like a heavy weight. So oh. I recommend it highly. I don't know. Like You like chip the weight off a little bit. You don't wait for it to get like. Yeah, you don't let it. It's like man. keeping it's like maintenance yourself. It's like how you maintenance your car, but you're doing it to your, your head. You know, like it helps a lot. That's dope, bro. Yeah. You make me want to book another session because I've been wanting to. It's funny. Dude. I've been wanting to book another session. She's really good. Yeah. But I'm just like in my head. I'm like, but wait, like I don't really know what to talk about. Like Ooh, I know, yeah. I know I want to go because it's good. It's like meditating, but I don't really have a big problem right now. She'll get things out of you though. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you they, go. Their their job is to find the root of why you got mad at your girl because <laughs> of one little thing. They're. You know they're like they are good at it. They're good at it, man. Dive in, dude. Man, dude, a lot of guys think a lot of guys think that you go to therapy to cry on someone's shoulder. Nah, hell no. And not, yeah. dude. They tap in. They're your homies. Like, yeah, yeah. Cool. They tap in, and then they like they tell you like scientifically why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Yeah. They don't just be like, no, it's anything. okay. You know, no, they, they they scientifically tap in. I think people think that people think you go and they're like, it's gonna be okay. Like, yeah. Like, no, dude. Like the, you talk about things, dude. Yesterday, um. Yesterday was one of the days where I took it and I didn't have much to say, but yeah. even then, like just checking in is important. It could be expensive, but there's a lot of therapy therapists who um take insurances. So if you have an yeah. insurance, dude, like a therapist, you could find a therapist who takes your insurance and I all think, that. You know? I think you're awesome for that, bro. Yeah. Like the therapy sessions and, and I've been preaching it lately. Yeah. Um, Tattoo artists. Yeah. Have you tat? Have you tatted any tat? I mean, I'm sorry. What am I talking about? Celebrities, bro. Oh. <laughs> have you tatted any? You're like what? Have you tatted um, any celebrities? I, I did tattoo like this. Um, this guy who sings corridos. His name's Omar Ruiz. He was okay. really cool. He was like, uh, it felt like I was tattooing my uncle. It was funny. Yeah. He was really cool. His he brought his manager. They brought us Michelada mix. I've never liked a uh, tomato. Yeah. And stuff like that, but dude, it was really good. It was good, huh? I drank a whole michelada and it was it was pretty good. Um, and um, who else did I tattoo? I tattooed some guy who who raps as well, named Fora. Um, I tattooed him, but I had a lot of fun with um Omar Ruiz. Yeah. Usually, like other people will message me, but like I always follow my gut feeling. Oh shit. Usually, if I feel like a sudden, a, a small amount of entitlement yeah i can't do it because if i do it i had an experience with this other guy i won't mention his name but yeah it's okay. i had gone over to to their place um where was it i think it was going towards like orange county but i went over there and i i was tattooing them and i just felt super uncomfortable the yeah. whole time because sometimes do like a lot of people could be um like you said, you know how how you mentioned. Do you ever let these things get to your head? Yeah, I feel okay. like they do. And then just the way they talk to their friends, the way they talk to oh, like, you see it first. The hand. people in their circle, it's it's not cool. And and seeing that, so first they'll hand, talk to you cool as a person, but then dude, they'll turn yeah. around to their peoples and be like, hey, like, yeah. and then they'll turn back to you like fakeness, like, yeah. oh yeah, my guy. Like, so it feels really odd. And me, when I'm in that environment, I talk to my friend Caesar a lot about it. Yeah, he knows how I am. If someone gives me that slightest 
sick to my stomach feeling, you don't I deal won't with it. ever be around you. Even if it's a client, if it's anyone, because you don't, dude, you're not obligated to work or be around people who don't make you feel good. Like, yeah. like you, you could, um, at any moment, even if you told them, yeah, I'll do this for you or I'll do this. Like, it's not bad to go back on it if you don't feel comfortable. A lot of people say, oh, you don't keep your word. Like, I do keep my word. But if you make me feel uncomfortable, I for sure will not work with you. Circumstances change, right? Yeah. Like, you, you, like, you change the contract kind of yeah. thing. Like, bro, like, you didn't tell me about this, that, the details. Like, yeah. That's interesting, bro. I like that. Just I because you say yes doesn't yeah. mean you got to commit, especially yeah. if it's for your own sake. I feel like you always have to put yourself first, take care of yourself, because... If you're always putting other people first, dude, do y'all end up miserable, bro? I like that, bro. I felt that before, so that's why I learned I, from that. I yeah. love that, bro. I, I, I really <laughs> like how we're getting to. I got my little flashcards here and stuff like that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, <laughs> dude. Okay, so I already asked all these questions. Um, yeah. How you call it? Talk to me about like the weirdest tattoo placement you've ever had to deal with. Um, the weird. first time you had to deal with, or how dude, I, I've had a bunch of like weird experiences i won't say their names but it's okay to talk about it because they probably don't even think about me anymore or whatever you know <laughs> but um so one of my first placement wise nothing's weird because you can get close to here the butt or whatever but nothing will be weird yeah sometimes people will make things weird like okay i did my very first convention tattoo convention in um orange county i believe it's okay. called muse inc so it's like travis barker music festival slash tattooing it's hectic as hell and basically this couple came up to me they were drunk and the guy wanted to get a matching tattoo with his girlfriend they were gonna get each other's initials okay and they were drunk, but the girl was super cool. The guy was being a hassle. He wanted me. He had to go to a concert in 15 minutes, a little show. Oh. And he wanted me to tattoo both of them within 15 minutes. He was getting, like, angry because I'm like, dude, that won't work. Setting up is going to take 15 minutes. Yeah. And um, I tattooed him either way. And then when I was done, he was rushing me to tattoo his girl. He's like, use the same needle, this and that. Like... Dude, I'm like, I don't care. You're like, care. you wouldn't do that. No, dude, you no. can't. Like, that's a that, uh, poor girl, bro. What if <laughs> poor girl? You know? um, things like that, dude. Or oh, there's this guy who, who I was tattooing as well. And it, it's so odd. Everyone's super cool, bro. I think like 98% of people are amazing. Yeah. It's always like, I'll get like two or three people a year that are like memorable or I'm like, <laughs> you're blacklisted. You know? You're blacklisted. Like people will get mad at you because the tattoo hurts or what? I'm like, I had one person do that and they're like, Dude, why is it hurting so much and this and that? And I'm like, cause it's a tattoo, bro. Dude, like what man. are you talking well, numbing about? Numbing cream. Well, how does that work? Like, I don't like to use it because it can affect the skin badly where, um, if you apply it, you let it sit for two hours, then you put your stencil and then you start tattooing. Most tattoos that I do take eight hours. So after two hours, it goes away and the pain will hit you out of nowhere. Oh, it will so still it will hit you. It'll out of hit you out of nowhere after two oh, hours shoot. and it'll be like 10 times worse. And on top of that, the cream does something bad to your skin where it makes it react for me personally, I've had the experience where their skin gets more difficult to work on. Like you could shade in something solid black and wipe and it will not be solid black because the skin is not taken in the ink. So that alone makes you, it forces you if you want to finish that day, it forces you to go in a little harder. And if you do that, there's a really high chance that you're going to have to touch that thing up because it's not going to heal oh, good. Dude. So I avoid it, bro. I don't like it, to and, be And honest. your style of shading is like, uh, I mean, your style of tattooing is like heavy shading, huh? Yeah, it is heavy, heavy shading. shading. It's a lot darker because I like to go in darker because when tattoos heal, they get lighter. So I just like how it looks once it's fully like healed out and everything, you know? So, bro, yeah. honestly, like you mentioned it earlier and I, I, I want to tap into that side. Um, yeah judging from your instagram you're heavy on family oh yeah i see dude. you have moms oh, yeah. around like <laughs> yeah. she, you look up to her a lot you can tell right you portray that and i have this thing where like i feel like as a man i feel like a good sign from a man is when they have a good relationship like not just with their parents but with their mother dude, because yeah. i feel like they because they have such a good relationship with their mother they, that you can tell that they know how to like treat a woman kind of yeah. thing. yeah 
I don't know if there. If anybody- I feel like I feel the same way. You know how to treat, um, like people in general. I feel like, obviously, no one is perfect. Like, there's always little things that I have done where I'm like, I could have been better at this. I could have been better at that. And like, sometimes I'll get like so overwhelmed by things I've done, whether like they're little or big mistakes, where, um, I. I'm so hard on myself for it, but at the same time, that is very true because I feel like because I care about my mom so much and then my brothers and then my my family in general, I feel like it helps me to be very caring with literally anybody I meet as long as they're like good to me. Yeah. Um, and if they're not good to me, you slowly just get away from it. You don't come, you don't do no trying to fight or none of that. So yeah, I feel okay. like- my whole family, dude, like even my aunts, my uncles, my cousins were like, for the most part, it has always been very close, um, whether you're fighting for a year or not. Like, so I, I feel like because I grew up around that, I've always really enjoyed like family time. Like, um, and then you, I feel you like, are a product of your environment. Yeah. So, I was just like, so I feel like my, my family just taught me how to be like more. I, they teach you how to be more outgoing and everything like that. My dad was more like super funny and like um, like bad mouth, but he was like very funny. So my mom was a complete opposite. Yeah, she would get mad at him for telling us to say like like oh like bad words to people and shit like that. But yeah. he was very funny. He was like a really good like a really good friend i loved hanging out with them a lot uh, i love being with my mom a lot and my brothers um but yeah i feel like my mom has she raised me so i feel like she did the mom and dad role yeah um because she's she was very strict my whole life but dude everything she did like whether she freaking yelled at me punished me for this and that back then i'm like dude do you hate me like <laughs> but no dude like, you understand it now Dude, hundred percent. I'm like now I understand everything, especially since since I had my daughter. I see that. I'm like now I understand why you're so protective. How, how long ago did you have your daughter? In January, so it's so been just like recently. five months, dude. Oh, it's only been five months. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Like I was gonna tap into that too. Like yeah. you're, you're a father now. Congratulations, <laughs> Thank dude. You. Um, I, I'm a father myself and it's yeah, crazy dude. because happy father's day. Cause I know oh, it just passed. Thank you, bro. Happy father's day to you too. Thank you. Um, I know, I know how it feels like. To, for me personally, it took me, it took me like a year for it to sink in for me, dude. I think because I had my son when I was 24 years old, yeah. I was still hanging around with a bunch of dummies. Yeah, I was coming home late, late at night, drunk, and yeah. like I'll, I'll lay in the bed and then I'll, I'll turn around and then there will be my son, yeah, like sleeping. Yeah, and I'll just be like, I'll think like, what, like what am I doing right now yeah. with my life? You know, I'm hanging around with a bunch of idiots. Yeah, doing the dumbest shit ever, dude. I, so I think it it changes you for the better. Yeah, you know, and if if it's not for the better, then it definitely like unlocks superpowers, bro. Yeah, I dude. think so. Yeah, the same thing with me because I'm 24 and I had my baby right now. But okay, same he, timeline. You're very young, dude. He, yeah. So like, even though like it's really like. Even though I feel like I wasn't even partying or drinking, I don't do any of that before the baby. Even now, I'm more like tattoo, go straight home to the baby. Yeah. Like, dude, like, I don't know. It's just such a good feeling for me. Like, I I feel like it still trips me out. I'll, like, stare at my baby and I'm like, it's weird, dude. Like, ah, oh, this is going to sound so, like, cringy, but I'll get, like, little butterflies. Cause I'm like, yeah. dude, like, she's so cool. Like, it's I think so we're all weird. dads in the room right here, the audience. Dude, yeah. It's a... Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. I I we I think that all the time. I'm like, I'll stare at the baby and I'm like, <laughs> I'll look at my girl and I'm like, babe, like this is our baby. It's so yeah. freaking weird. I can't even like, dude. I went to the movie theater to watch Super Mario Bros. Cause our apartment did this event where they rented out a movie theater. So we were out there, um, just watching that movie. And in our movie theater, there's a bar. So I got two cranberry vodkas. I don't drink, bro. <laughs> right, so right, those okay. um. Cranberry vodkas had uh, two shots of vodkas in um in each one, um, and dude, as soon as I went into the movie theater, my bad, I have something in my eyes, bro. You good, brother? You this good. is the one part that you cut out. You're like, no, nah, we won't edit. <laughs> nah, he started crying. I thought he was oh, crying. No. I no. thought he was crying. I was like, bro, like, I'm, no. wait, I'm waiting for him to come out with something emotional. No, and I'm just like. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, <he's> like, <laughs> I'm nah, like, nah, I don't, I don't cry easily, but in this situation, because I had, um, I, w- I had drank, I was, um, in the movie theater, and then I looked at my phone to check the time, and in my phone, I have the baby's, um, picture, so I looked at the phone, bro, and right away, dude, I started crying, like, hysteric, like, so bad, bro, I lo- you know, like, the Kim K cry, when she's, like, making that hardcore face, dude, I was crying for, like, 20 minutes straight. You want some water? Of- Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just because of like how much I was like, like missing her in that moment. So I told my girl like, dude, this is crazy. Like to, to me personally, it's something I've always thought about. Like, oh, I, I I can't wait to have a kid someday. Like I know it's weird, but even since like high school, I was like, so you've always wanted a child. Yeah, dude. Like, Cause a lot of people are opposite. They're like, oh my god, I'm having a baby. They freak the fuck out. No, nah, dude, I yeah. was excited. I planned it. My baby was not an okay. accident. You know, like okay, awesome, dude. Yeah. You got your, you got everything in order, bro. Like you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. That's dope, man. Yeah, so, like, um, yeah, dude, like, I felt like, um, to me, it feels like an overwhelmingly good feeling just to be with a baby and stuff. So, I want more, but, like, so far, it's it's going cool, like, with that one we have right now, you know? I'm, I'm hoping I can have more someday, too, as well, Dude, bro. hell yeah. And I used to be, when I was younger, like, when I was young, I used to be like, man, F them kids, bro. Like, I <laughs> yeah. never want kids, and I was that guy. Yeah. I was that guy, even when, like... My girl had gotten pregnant. Like I had the talk with her parents. They brought me in, and I was such a like idiot, bro. I sat there like I don't. They're like, so what's your plan? I'm just like, I don't know. I don't even like kids. Oh no <laughs> way! Dude, I was such an idiot. Oh, I was like, I was such an idiot, man. I was like, I don't know. I don't even like kids, so I don't know. And it's just, it was, it was for sure a bad first impression of me, bro. Because I think I've like, I've, I think I for sure am one of the best dads, you know. Yeah. That I see around, dude. I feel like personally, from what you're telling me right now, like you've you've for sure grown a lot, dude. Because oh, I cannot yeah. picture you as that person. No, yeah. I feel like you're like what? That doesn't sound like yeah, you. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you. So it's so weird. Sometimes you find yourself in situations where you're hanging out with people and you just can't be yourself. Yeah, I think that's kind of like what it is too sometimes. But yeah, dude. I like my son's five years old. Such a blessing, and like yeah. I, I, I love him, dude. I love that's him. so dope. I have a uh, aside from my Rick Productions, I have my personal account on Instagram, and it's just like you'll see it there too. Like, like your whole kid, and yeah, everything? my son and everything. Yeah. It's my world and stuff like that. Hell yeah. But yeah, dude. Um, again, welcome to the podcast, dude. Thank you, have, bro. have you been like you haven't done anything like this? No, not nah, doing my first. No, nah. you have any yeah. questions for Rick Productions while you have them here? <laughs> um, I'm gonna well, turn the how mic did to you. you. Get started. I was wondering that too. I, like, you know what? You know what's funny? Everybody like everybody's wondering like that question. How I get yeah. started? So now I'm trying to figure out ways of like what unique ways I can talk about like around the time, like getting me started. Yeah. So let me think. Um, what got me started? I'm trying to think. Um, I know I told this story before. Well, I liked I liked photography since I was in yeah. middle school. And um, I think the very first official camera I, was like a little point and shoot, like Canon camera that Is my parents like the, got me for Christmas. The film ones? No, not even the film one. It's, it's weird. digital. It's weird because people always ask me, like, do you like film? Like, have you ever worked on film, like yeah. processing? And I'm like, I've never had interest in that. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. I've never had I, like digital. One. Digital. I'm always you, been digital. Still. You edit it and all that. Yeah, it's weird. So my parents bought me like a little like Canon point and shoot power shoot. It was called with like, and then I used to film like um, I used to bring all my buddies over after school. Yeah, and we used to film like World War II reenactments oh, and stuff slick. like that with, gr- yeah. with like grenades and like fake prop guns and. And I don't know, I was just, I always wanted to like do, I was into filming more than anything when yeah. I first started, like you, act, like films, you know? Yeah. Do you like still remember your first pay to shoot or no? My first, pay, oh my God. You know what? <laughs> I think we could talk about it now. Because <laughs> I know it's it's hard to, to do your first paid one. Because for me personally, I'm like, oh, am I good enough for this? So I was wondering like, when was your first one or like? Well, like, so the when you say first paid shoot, like you charged yeah what what comes to mind is i because i do events now right yeah i wanted to do events because i felt like that's where the money was and my very first event i did it was so bad the communication bro like i didn't even know who my point of contact was i didn't know who owed me what i didn't (laughs) like i just started it i was young dude i think i was still in like college like i was so young and, and i felt like they took advantage because of that yeah and um like it was a learning lesson for sure 
And uh, I don't want to say too much details because it was like a family recommended friend. So yeah. it's just like, you know, I don't want to like shit on them, but it, it is not right. Yeah. Uh, I quoted them $1,200 mm-hmm. for the shoot. And, and I, I gave them the rundown of what they were going to receive, the product and everything. And then they gave me half of the money for down payment, like 600 I think, 500 maybe, I think. And then when I turned in the video and everything, they were like, no, we don't like it. This is not what we agreed on. We wanted more minutes. And I'm like, well, more minutes is going to be more money. And they're like, no, 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 blah, 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 no, whatever. And they just like left me with the project, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is why I preach wedding films. This is why I preach you should invest in your wedding films and event films because it's the most precious moments in your life yeah. that you're going to have forever, yeah. right? So what ended up happening was these people reached out to me and they're like, oh, like months later, dude, I thought about deleting the project. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to keep it there. I'm going to keep it on save mode. like, Because uh, I think I delivered them a, a, like, a, a, like a trailer of it and they, didn't, they just didn't want to, I don't know what it was. It wasn't yeah. the full thing. Or I don't know how it went. But they hit me up months later and they're like, hey, like, you know what? A family member of ours passed and your video, like, is going to help us remember him and th- those moments. Like, can you please, like, the family doesn't have money right now. Like, they gave me this whole BS, like, we don't have money right now. Can you please, out of your heart, just give, you, give me the video? And I thought about it, right? And my friends and my family and, and my girl, they were like, nah, make them pay. Like, if it's really valuable to them, make them pay. Yeah. And in my head, like, I believe in good karma. So I said, you know what? Like, fuck the money. I'm going to give them the video because I'm going to do something right. And, um, and, you know, hopefully I get good karma from it. I'm going to do what's right. But... What they did with the whole payment situation wasn't right at all. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it took someone a pass for them to like realize that like, oh, you know what? Like your work means something to us. Yeah. It's I, interesting, man. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I feel like that's the the bad thing is that when people are starting, like I'll see it with friends who are starting whatever they're starting. Like, dude, everyone will aim to take advantage of like someone who's beginning because they see that someone who's starting off is obviously a lot more timid more like less confident but then once you start doing your craft every day like now you're more set you know you're like no this is what it is and and i get people that come across me that don't know that they just met me and they're trying to like lowball me they're trying to bump my head and they hit me with the oh you know um what's that called oh i don't have payment but we can collab or i'll give you exposure like and that that shit to me bro like to an extent right because it depends on who you're working with and whatnot it's like um What's the word I'm looking for? It's like a trigger word, bro. Dude, like, yes. can I like, can I like, hey, bro, official Gordon, yeah. come here, give me a whole sleeve. You know how much that time and money that costs, yeah. and how much effort you put into it, and and I'll give you exposure, you know. And it's like, yeah. bro, what exposure? I don't know. I I noticed, dude, that even with exposure, it doesn't always work, bro, because their audience is not your audience. There you so, go. dude, like, you could have someone share you. I've had people share me with like three four five million followers dude and i've always gotten a lot more clientele from my loyal clients who recommend me left and right to people actual networking you know? yeah, yeah dude like you could tattoo youtubers whatever you could work and film for free i filmed with a big youtuber and, and, and he and shouted some, me out and it's like it, dude what, what did you like 20 people will follow you honestly yeah. i did it i did it because my girl was a big fan of them okay the dude posted like it's funny because he's a big ass youtuber now um i don't know if i want to burn out the name or not uh okay the ace family bro the ace family i, I wa- had one similar yeah so i work i work with the ace family right the dude was super dope and stuff like that whatnot but i just wasn't feeling it really to be honest with you yeah I'm like, uh, i don't know like i got other things going on i really this is not really my priority right now but one one night he posted, oh, filming something at an in, in indoor, like I need a drone guy. Yeah. And I and, and my girl was like, Oh my god, the ace family, like yeah, yeah. do it for me. And like here I go, like, okay, babe. Like he has a <laughs> he has a thousands of followers. If I DM him, he's probably not gonna see my DM. You'll see it. And I DM'd him and yeah, he replied, like, bro, I just saw your drone work with the BMW, like it's super dope. Let's meet. And I'm just like, oh shit. I was like, okay, I guess we'll meet, you know? And I met him, and that was, like, one of my first times working with, like, a big celebrity. And at that time, he wasn't even, like, that big. Yeah. He was big, but he's not, like, right now he's doing, like, professional boxing, blah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, like, um, I I worked with him before, and, uh, yeah. I had that similar... So, it wasn't um, the main... It was his brother that I had tattooed, and same thing, trading for um, exposure. Exposure. But even then, when... 
when they post it, they don't post it like how you agreed on it. It's like a quick story, and I'm like, this dude put me. <laughs> I said he shouted me out. This dude put me in the fucking description with my link on it. Like, okay, like people are gonna see that. Yeah, like dude, he just like, put me in the description. So it's kind of like in ways that will that it won't help you, and I just feel like. Uh, it sucks to have to talk about it and like, and just like name drop. But at the we'll, same, we'll time, give them the benefit of the doubt that people change, right? Yeah, like, you know, but we'll the same. It. At the same time, it sucks because I know these guys are like big time, like whatever they're on the whatever they're doing. But it's not okay because you're in that level to take advantage of everybody else. Yeah, like, I've had a dude that he's a sick ass photographer. He was gonna go shooting shooting he was gonna go do photography and tour with um the game yeah okay and so once it came down to it this dude was like okay so how much is your team how much are you guys gonna pay me he's like oh we're gonna get you on the hotel the food everything's free he's like no but how much are you gonna pay me because he has to get paid so that he can send money back to his family right that hotel and everything else is expected. You're the one who wants me if to If anything, travel. for people like that, they're tax write-offs. Yeah. So they're like... So on top of that, you have to you have to pay the individual because how, how are you... The, the hotel and everything's expected because how are you going to pay them, let's say, 500 a day and then expect them to pay out of pocket all the food and everything? Like, no, you have to cover that because you're hiring that person. You're taking them along with you. I've heard horror stories. Like, like I, I didn't end up going with them because I didn't want to film with them because I kind of got the vibe now. But the videographer that he got and that he ended up growing with, they ended up getting to some big drama about him not paying him right dude, and this and that. I'm like, damn, pay. I knew it. Your gut never dude, lies. Your intuition never dude, lies, bro. Yeah, I, I felt the similar feeling with, in the same areas with people mm -hmm. who they're affiliated with. Yeah, not just them, but like in the drop. same area, yeah. the influencer shit, like there whatever. Go, yeah. But... um. It's always the people who you would think have the money and all that who don't want to pay somebody who's making an honest living. Like, bro, yeah. how are you expecting to get shit for free? Somebody will do it eventually, which oh, sucks. Yeah. And they know that. So they're like, why the fuck am I going to pay for it? But, dude, I don't even make millions. And I'm over here trying to, like, pay extra for my homies to do shit for me because you appreciate it. You know how much work it goes into yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, almost like disrespectful, right? To not do like it. once yeah. you understand, once you're there and you're fully set, like how you like, and then now you're, when you're in a position to help other people, you see, now you see it from their perspective, and you're like, dude, you like you you were trying to fuck me over, yeah, you're trying to manipulate me into doing work for you, bro. That's messed up, yeah. You know? But anyways, bro, like moving forward, I was getting mad now. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> The people in the back, like, no, cut, cut, cut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Change the topic. You, you, had, you had them going with the kids and the family, and now you're pissing them off. Like, you know? But you know what, bro? Um, Gustavo, I appreciate you coming through, man. The yeah. podcast, guys, check the podcast out, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channels. Make sure to check out Gustavo. I really Thank love you. his work. Super dope artist, guys. And is there anything else you want to say to the audience before we... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, thank well, th thank you, bro. Like I appreciate you guys, like for um, um, having me come through. It's I I was very excited because uh, to come here because um, I see all the stuff you're doing and I it it just feels nice to come through and just see people doing things for themselves like what you're doing with this. So I wanted to support it, and then at the same time you're having me, so like you're supporting me. So yeah, I it means a lot to me, and then um. Yeah, dude, I was more excited to come just to, like, talk to you and everything. And I know this is, like, a challenge for me. Like, um, I never... Dude, my you voice... You low-key surprised me, bro. Because on our first project, I was trying to give you to do voiceover. I couldn't, And we had so many takes. And I'm like, you know what, bro? I'm going to get this guy and to you talk. Know what, yeah. You know, like... You know what, too, dude? On the... Sorry, I, I, I'll cut it after this. But that, too, um, hearing my voice was so hard for me, bro. And... It, it always is but lately I've, I've been trying to knock knock out like things that are like that make me really uncomfortable like dude i was nervous on my way here stomach yeah was, like, i was feeling like like nervous dude not gonna lie so this is something like a, a step out of my comfort zone 
So it, it feels really good that 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 I went through with it and I didn't back out because well, I was very nervous. I, I hope we made it easier for you and Dude, we were awesome yeah. to work super with. Super comfortable and everything. Also, like for anybody out there that wants to join us, you hear it from him. He's a super shy guy, awesome yeah, guy, no, cool. and, and he made it out here and we made it a good, like great progress. So yeah, dude, it's super cool. Nowadays, you don't know where, where the hell you're ending up at or what, you, what to expect, you know? Yeah. Like, But <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate you guys. And um, yeah, dude. Cool. Thank you so I'll, much. I'll see you next time. Hopefully, we'll probably have them again on the next podcast show. Just let us know, guys. We're going to keep having people on here. And yeah, I invested all this just to give creatives, tattoo artists, any artists out there, entrepreneurs, a platform so they can talk about themselves. And it's really a selfless project. So thank you, guys. And thank you, bro. Thanks.